Keith John Moon was an English drummer for the rock band The Who. He was noted for his unique style of playing and his eccentric, often self-destructive behavior. Moon grew up in Wembley and took up the drums during the early 1960s. After playing with a local band The Beachcombers he joined The Who in 1964 before they recorded their first single. Moon was recognized for his drumming style, which emphasized tom-toms, cymbal crashes and drum fills. Keith John Moon was born to Alfred Charles and Kathleen Winifred Moon on 23 August 1946 at Central Middlesex Hospital in northwest London. He grew up in Wembley. Moon was hyperactive as a boy, with a restless imagination and a particular fondness for music and the goon show. Moon attended Alperton Secondary Modern School after failing his 11-plus exam which precluded his attending a grammar school. His art teacher said in a report retarded artistically, idiotic in other respects, his music teacher wrote that Moon has great ability, but must guard against a tendency to show off. Moon took lessons from one of the loudest contemporary drummers, screaming Lord such as Carlo Little at 10 shillings per lesson. His early style was influenced by jazz, American surf music and rhythm and blues, exemplified by noted Los Angeles studio drummer Hal Blaine. His favorite musicians were jazz artists particularly Gene Krupa. He also admired Elvis Presley's original drummer DJ Fontana, The Shadows' original drummer Tony Meehan and The Pretty Things' Viv Prince. Moon also enjoyed singing with a particular interest in Motown. Moon idolized the Beach Boys' Roger Daltrey later said that given the opportunity, Moon would have left to play for the California band even at the peak of the Who's fame. During this time Moon joined his first serious band The Escorts replacing his best friend Jerry Evans. In December 1962 he joined The Beachcombers, a semi-professional London cover band playing hits by groups such as The Shadows. During his time in the group Moon incorporated theatrical tricks into his act including shooting the group's lead singer with a starter pistol. The Beachcombers all had day jobs. Moon who worked in the sales department at British Gypsum, had the keenest interest in turning professional. In April 1964 he auditioned for The Who as a replacement for Doug Sandham. The Beachcombers continued as a local cover band after his departure. A commonly cited story of how Moon joined The Who is that he appeared at a show shortly after Sandham's departure, where a session drummer was used. Dressed in ginger clothes and with his hair dyed ginger he claimed to his would-be bandmates that he could play better, he played in the set's second half, nearly demolishing the drum kit in the process. Moon's arrival in the Who changed the dynamics of the group, Sandham had generally been the peacemaker as Daltrey and Townsend feuded between themselves, but because of Moon's temperament the group now had four members frequently in conflict. We used to fight regularly, remembered Moon in later years, John Entwistle and I used to have fights it wasn't very serious, it was more of an emotional spur of the moment thing. Moon also clashed with Daltrey and Townsend, we really have absolutely nothing in common apart from music, although Townsend described him as a completely different person to anyone I've ever met. The pair had a rapport in the early years and enjoyed practical jokes and improvised comedy, Moon's drumming style affected the band's musical structure. Although Entwistle initially found Moon's lack of conventional timekeeping problematic, it created an original sound. Moon was particularly fond of touring since it was his only chance to regularly socialize with his bandmates, and was generally restless and bored when not playing live. This later carried over to other aspects of his life, as he acted them out according to journalist and Who biographer Dave Marsh as if his life were one long tour. These antics earned him the nickname Moon the Loon. Moon's lifestyle began to undermine his health and reliability. During the 1973 Quadrophenia tour, at the Who's debut U.S. date at the Cow Palace in Daly City, California, Moon ingested a mixture of tranquilizers and brandy. During the concert Moon passed out on his drum kit during Won't Get Fooled Again, the band stopped playing and a group of roadies carried Moon off stage. They gave him a shower and an injection of cortisone, sending him back on stage after a 30-minute delay. 
Moon passed out again during Magic Bus and was again removed from the stage. The band continued without him for several songs before Townsend asked can anyone play the drums? I mean somebody good. A drummer in the audience, Scott Halpin came up and played the rest of the show. During the opening date of the band's March 1976 US tour at the Boston Garden, Moon passed out over his drum kit after two numbers and the show was rescheduled. The next evening Moon systematically destroyed everything in his hotel room, cut himself doing so and passed out. He was discovered by manager Bill Kerbishley, who took him to a hospital, telling him I'm gonna get the doctor to get you nice and fit, so you're back within two days. Because I wanna break your fucking jaw. You have fucked this band around so many times and I'm not having it anymore. Doctors told Kerbishley that if he had not intervened, Moon would have bled to death. Marsh suggested that at this point Daltrey and Entwistle seriously considered firing Moon, but decided that doing so would make his life worse. Because The Who's early stage act relied on smashing instruments, and owing to Moon's enthusiasm for damaging hotels, the group were in debt for much of the 1960s, Entwistle estimated they lost about £150,000. Even when the group became relatively financially stable after Tommy, Moon continued to rack up debts, he bought a number of cars and gadgets and flirted with bankruptcy. Moon's recklessness with money reduced his profit from the group's 1975 UK tour to £47.35.